Hey there, and welcome to the daily podcast where wisdom smacks us with kisses or love taps. I'm Michelle Spiva, a wisdom strengthening coach, your host, and practical priestess of wisdom. Join us daily to gain wisdom and mental strength as we tackle innovative thinking, address emotional and behavioral life traps, and yes, provide you with some practical how-tos to wrap it all up. So settle in or crank up the speed 2x, whatever gets your mental processes firing as we dive in. Stay tuned. Hey there, it's Michelle Spivey, your Practical Priestess of Wisdom with today's podcast of Wisdom Smack. Join me on the flip. Today, we get really practical and give you a quick little six-point cheat sheet on how to work yourself out of a jam. You know, when your back is against the wall and you feel like you've run out of options, we're going to be talking about how you can think on your feet and figure out some wisdom smacks of what to do when you're low on resources, when it seems like you have no more options, and how you can turn it around for your good. So I invite you to come on and hang out with me and I'll see you on the flip for a quick little conversation on (laughs) a cheat sheet for when you're out of options. I'll see you soon. All right there, dear one, let's go on and get started. Today, we're going to be really practical. So yesterday, uh, if you were, if you're listening to this at the time of recording and in order, yesterday, we talked a little bit about the traps, the subtle traps that are out here to get us. And Wisdom had um, me talk about uh, the trap of superiority and how it can do you more harm than you would imagine. And today, Wisdom is giving us a kind of like a, a, a nice little brush of the lips of a, of a wisdom smack and helping us to deal with practical things. At the time of recording, uh, there are a lot of things happening financially for people, uh, especially in the United States where I live. And so what would I be if not a practical priestess going before wisdom to get Uh, practical things that we can use. And so here we go. We're going to be talking about a cheat sheet for what to do when you're out of options. And a lot of it is going to focus on being able to get yourself out of financial conundrums, but we'll also talk a little bit about some of the others. But for the most part, it'll be on how to navigate uh, tumultuous times where you really don't know what is going on. All right, so let's get into it. So the first thing I want to talk about is the very practical strategy of what to do when your back is against the wall. And if you ever have to do this on the fly and, you know, emotions are high and you're not quite sure about uh, how to think straight, how to move straight, how to prioritize or what to do, then this is going to help you. And I've talked about this little framework in different ways, but it keeps coming up because it's so good and wisdom loves to use it. And you already know it. It's the uh, five W's plus the H. And that is who, what, when, where, why. Those are the five W's. I'll say them again. Who, what, when, where, why. And then the H is how. And so you can use each one of these to come up with some very clever and insightful strategies that are help you to move quickly, help you to uh, get out of a jam, if you will, and a maneuver and um, a wisdom path that will get you from feeling like you're out of options or your back is against the wall to being able to take that very thing and transmute it. Remember when we talked about going from bad to good, how to turn your bad into good? That is part of what we would be doing here. So let's get into it. So uh, one of them is Uh, where? And I'm going to start with that one and work my way back. So where? One of the things that I have found when you feel like you're out of options or you feel like your back is against the wall is 
not necessarily just a location of where you are, but uh, a, a kind of location, if you will, that is very attractive to people who may have the resources that would help you. And so what I have found, and and take what you will of this, because I'm going to just be able to give you an example from me, is that when I found that my back was against the wall and I needed things or resources or, or provisions or favors that I didn't necessarily have or con- have control over, I used these quote unquote wares and my wares were I would create safe spaces for people uh, to be able to uh, talk with me, talk to me. Uh, You would be surprised that there are a lot of people who have a lot at stake who will either pay handsomely or who will um, help you to make uh, important connections when they feel like uh, they are able to let their hair down or share and know that it's not going to be repeated. If you ever want to find something that most wealthy, affluent, and rich people um, highly treasure and are willing to pay for, you will find it in the where. And the where is the safe place of confidentiality. What is one of the first things that you find um, people who have a lot to lose require of those around them? That is their secrecy, their loyalty, their, um, their ability to keep their mouth shut, to the point where a lot of people sign NDAs, non-disclosure agreements. Um, a lot of people uh, threaten with um, punitive lawsuits for breaking that trust and breaking their word. And so that is a place that if you are able to provide that, people will pay handsomely. As long as they can vet you and know that it's worth it, that is a way for you to get your back off the wall and to provide new opportunities and new options that you may not have ever thought were there. And so when I uh, was going through these, I was like, well, should I share this? And yes. And the reason why is because a lot of people do not understand that it is not necessarily what you can do or what you have. Sometimes it's who you be. And we've talked about that, that the proper order is that we be human beings doing human things to have human desires and wants and all of those types of things that we want to get. So we are human beings doing, uh, you know, doing the living. And just by being there for people, uh, you can actually turn that into something that is a win-win. You provide a uh, confidential ear, they provide either funds or favors. Uh, don't believe me? Check and see in the and and uh, the days of antiquities when you had powerful people, especially kings, queens, and political people. They would always have a vizier or a a confidant, if you will, in their court, where they were able to run their thoughts past them, and these people were sworn to protect them with their protect them with their lives uh, because confidentiality was more costly than gold because those who held your confidence you were putting your very life in their hands because you were exposed they were you were exposed because they knew your weaknesses and the like now I don't want to keep going on with this because we have we have a whole bunch more stuff to talk about and I want to get through this back against the wall strategy first okay so we've talked about an example of the where so I want to talk about the who Uh, The next thing is, and I'll kind of touch on who again when I do what, but on the who, this is where you want to strengthen your network and understand that there is power in timely favors. If you've ever watched The Godfather, the uh, trilogy, Mario Puzo's The Godfather, it is not about money and drugs as as you would think if you were just to believe the the hubbub of seeing it the currency the true currency of the godfather and what made the corleone family so strong was not necessarily the money at first no the legacy the empire the dynasty was built 
on the father's ability to understand the who. He understood how to have a strong network where he was the hub, the center, meaning that he would do favors for people. And he would leave those finger, favors, those um, those untied strings out there just in case, like insurance for it whenever he needed it. And when the time came, people would pay back that favor or when the time came, he was able to put different people together for a win-win situation that would benefit all parties involved, including him and his family. And this is how they were able to build and grow under the noses of everyone else. And so back against the wall strategies that don't require you necessarily having a lot of monies up front. If you remember these things, these are going to help you. So that's uh, an example of the who. So now the next one is the why. And I'm going to say this one and it might sound like, oh, I've heard this one before, but I want you to consider what wisdom is saying to you. So with the why, the why is Figure out other people's whys for what they do, what they do, and then offer to help them either solve their whys or automate their whys, lessen the learning curve of their whys, or make their whys simplified. And by doing that, you become very strong. Um, yesterday, I, I had a great time talking with one of my delightful nieces uh, who's in the workforce working with very uh, learned people in um, a um, law firm. And we were talking and uh, she was talking about all the things that, you know, uh, they do and and she's learning and and the like. And we got to talking about, in a roundabout way, we started talking about the why as a great strategy of being able to not only uh, gather a lot of power, but to know how to turn whatever comes your way into your favor where it becomes a boom, you know, instead of just a duty that you have to do. And so with that, we were basically talking about how to figure out other people's whys, their motivations, what makes them tick, figuring out what drives them that they may not be aware that drives them, but taking advantage of the fact that you have observers advantage to watch their patterns, to learn them and to see how they tend to act. And so we had this that portion of our conversation was, I think it was, it was great. And uh, she seemed to get a lot out of it. And it reminded me of how we have these tools and these skills that just go simply back to walking through the five W's and the H to figure out a strategy that will get you out of a bind. Now she wasn't in a bind, but this just reminded me of things that have happened. Now, I've, I've used this why many times because as you know, if you've been rocking with me, you know I am a huge, a huge cheerleader for learning patterns and not necessarily exploiting them, but not letting them go to waste either. Okay, so we've talked about the where, meaning providing that safe space for confidentiality. Uh, we've talked about the who, uh, getting a strong network and having power in timely favors that are owed to you. And then we've talked about the why, figuring out other people's whys and then offering them ways to help them solve their problems, automate things, um, simplify things and um, get structure or system to things. So then let's talk about the win. Now, this is the part that is a little tricky when your back is against the wall and you feel like you're out of options because it seems like everything seems to speed up. And so the win is, uh, and, and this is one that I've actually done, okay? And like I said, I'm trying to give you guys wisdoms that you may not have considered in this way before because it's hard to think of things like this when you feel like you're out of time. So the win is you're going to play the game of arbitrage. Now, arbitrage is where you control something. Imagine you're in the middle and you are the pass through. So say for instance, one person has a ball and on one of your side on, on one side and the other person wants the ball. And so you're the pass through. If you were in the real estate or the stock market, you would be called a broker. 
So that's really kind of like what arbitrage is in a way. But with this, this is where you will, quote unquote, be able to control something without having to have a lot of skin in the game. This is if you were in the stock market, this is where you would play shorts and longs, betting against whether a company will uh, their their stock price will uh lose uh, value or increase value in the future. If you were in real estate, this is where uh, the arbitrage would look like you holding the mortgage where you're the pass through, where the person who is renting or buying the home pays you because you in turn have a contract with the person who owns the home and you don't pay as much as you're charging the other person to pay you. If you're doing this in retail, retail arbitrage is a huge thing. This is where you go to Goodwill, you find a rare book, you pay 25 cents for it, and you look on Amazon and people who are looking for that book are willing to pay $50 for it. And so you go and you pay 25 cents for the book because so now you control it with 25 cents, you send it off to Amazon and put it up on their inventory. And then when that person finds your book and pays $50 for it, you get the, well, you, you know, you have to pay Amazon fees and things, but this is an idea of the win. So what you're doing is you are elongating the time that you need to be able to create this win in your favor. And a lot of people, because they're so stressed, they don't realize the true power you have without necessarily having to come to the table with money or with a lot of money. It amazes me how many people are able to control vast sums of portfolios with little to no skin in the game. But it is simply because they have remembered the win of the arbitrage of being able to control something and your gift or talent that you bring is that you are able to make the deal close. You are able to find the fertile ground of the person who wants what it is you're controlling more than you're being asked to pay or, or more than the owner is uh, uh, expecting to get paid so that you get paid in the in-between. All right, that brings us to the what and the how. Now, we've talked a lot about what and hows. And uh, the first thing I want to talk about is good old leverage. We mustn't ever forget that we always have an ability to have leverage at our disposal. I am. Th I think about when I was putting these notes together, I thought about the tale that um, Mark Twain tells about how he had chores to do and it was to paint the fence when he was a kid and he didn't want to paint the fence but of course he had to paint the fence and lo and behold his friends came by and they were on their way to go play at the creek or whatever it was and he rightfully so became very clever and they asked you know well you know do you want to go with us he knew he couldn't go but instead of saying no i have to paint this fence he turns it around and he makes it look like painting the fence is the best thing that could ever happen to the point where he sells it to them where they're like well i want to paint the fence too and so he, it gets to the point where all of his friends pick up a brush or whatever it is and start helping to paint the fence to the point where he he stops and he just starts directing so they can hurry up and what ends up happening is is he used the leverage of an idea to get everybody sold on it to help him paint the fence and he kept them entertained so it didn't feel like they were working because they were all having fun doing it together except for him him and they got done fast and then they were all able to go and hang out and when you look at this remember that the what can be more powerful, meaning the what, the story that he told of how he told it, than even the who or the how. Now, traditionally, when we look at leverage, we think about getting the who and not having to understand the how. And, and that's fine. That's a great way of looking at uh, traditionally how to get people to do things. But if you really wanna be real subtle and wise about it, understand the what. What is it? that is going to make people want to help you. 
All right. So going uh, and recapping this, because I want to talk to you about a few other things in this this uh, last part of our, our time together today. In this cheat sheet for when you're out of options, if nothing else, I want you to fall back on this simple format, this simple framework of back against the wall strategies of going through your list of who, what, when, why, where, and how. So where can you provide discrete services for people who are will handsomely pay you for either your advice, your favor, a listening ear, uh, allowing them to move quietly in the shadows or under the radar if you have uh, opportunity to provide them that? The where. Where are you going to, I mean, excuse me, the who, because we just covered where, <laughs> the who, how are you going to strengthen your network to be able to connect people and provide and hold powerful favors that are timely? That's going to be the who, the why. How are you going to figure out using the observer's advantage, other people's whys to help them problem solve to where you help them to um, shorten the learning curve, automate, systematize and simplify things? And then the when. How are you going to find a way for you to elongate a situation to benefit you where you're able to arbitrage and control things with little skin in the game, giving you enough time to find a buyer for a seller who is going to pay you more and you get the benefit from that. And then the what? Uh, For leverage, what is going to be the story selling? What is going to be the way you present something that will encourage and influence people to help you achieve your major goal? Think of Mark Twain and the story he told his friends to help get them to paint the fence. All right. So now that we've gotten that back against the wall strategy of the five W's and the H, let's move on to a few other things that I want to make sure that I make note of. Now, I want to mention a um, channel. It's called Alux and it's a channel for luxury. But from time to time, they do some great work on just giving sound wisdom. And so I want to shout them out. Um, Alux, A. L-U-X. You can find them on YouTube. I believe they have a podcast that has started and their website. So shout out to Alux. And they had a recent um, segment that I, I found some real wisdom smacks. And so I wanted to make sure that I gave them proper attribution. Now, this is not the totality of what they were saying in this. I just made some notes of what they said, and then I riffed off of that. So let me get this set up because I want to make sure I give it to you. OK, so the first thing that I totally agreed with is when you're out of options to consider doing a hard mental reset, do a reframe. It really does matter for you to flush out all of the toxic narratives and stories and untruths, half truths and uh, boogeymen and women in your mind so that you can think straightly. Now, I mean, it sounds like a duh, but in time of need, it is a great piece of advice. So hold that one and make sure do that first. Get your mind right. Then now this is they didn't say it this way, but this is how I interpreted it. Be able to open up to see and excess the formerly invisible. One of the things that I have had to train myself because it's not the normal way I think, when my back is against the wall, when I don't see any more options, when I feel like all hope is lost, I have had to learn over the years, and I still struggle with it, to look for what's missing, look for what's not there, look for the gaps, look for what's not being said, look for the silence that's screaming. Because what this will normally do is it will help you to open up new perceptions and ways of seeing something to reframe it. But what it'll also do is it will help you to speed up the time it takes for you to get acclimated to your new surroundings or the new way things are so that you can get past all of the hurt, danger, and the, uh, and the fear that might be preventing you from moving forward. And so the next one is, is to be tenacious and keep going. I don't care if you have to go slow, just keep moving. If nothing else, always keep your momentum. Now, the next few I wrote down, to me, they're does, but I'm going to say them anyway, because it's always good to have them on the record. That is, you want to be proactive, be willing to start from the bottom and work up to the top, get organized and prioritized, create new opportunities for yourself. 
And that includes being that problem solver, like I said, uh, using those back against the wall strategies that I just gave you so that you can uh, take on um, a new mantle of who you are. And along those lines, this one, I put this in, uh, you know, because they said it and it just got my mind to, 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 to whirling. And they talked about trying new things and options. And this is where, when we talked the other day about turning your bad into good, this is where it comes in. Learning how to see what other people think is trash and turning it into treasure. And what I mean is, uh, my ancestors, when they came to this country, were giving, given the, the refuse, the trash of the foods. They were given the, the leaves to the, the tops um, for the vegetables that everyone thought were the, the best. And they turned those into delicate, well, Southern um, soul food delicacies. Uh, they were given the entrails to eat and they turned those into something and um, on and on and on. And so I come from a history of being able to learn to respect because when you respect something, you go back and you give it a second glance with a curiosity to find its worth. Um, I, I'm used to being able to respect things and go back and give them a second glance. And that's what I'm going to encourage you to do, to try new things and options by giving them a second glance, being willing to take what other people think is true trash and turning it into treasure. And then, of course, you definitely want to consider, if possible and where needed, reinventing yourself. Uh, they, they gave a quote that I thought was apropos, so I'm going to give it to you. And, um, when they talked about reinventing yourself, they referred to, uh, President Theodore Roosevelt. And he said, do what you can, where you are, but what you have. And I think that is the great, um, uh, uh, solid foundation that we need to remember. Uh, there is a statement that uh, I heard a few years back that I think is wonderful in times like this. When you look back on what you've done in the past, don't beat yourself up. Instead, understand that you worked to the best of your ability with the resources and the understanding and knowledge you had at that time. And thus, here we have a president saying, do what you can, where you are, with what you have. All right. And so the next one is options appear to those who are expecting them. Now, we've talked many times about you get what you expect and you um sometimes only get what you hope for. So you must make sure that you keep your expectations tight, right, and focused. No wavering in your expectations, no matter who or what it looks like. If you are believing for governments to move in your favor to say yes, you know, to uh, additional stimulus funding and unemployment and all that kind of stuff, don't waver. They will need to come in line with your expectations. I know it might sound crazy, but it is very powerful. Now, I could go on because I did have some notes about taking you guys through the path from thought equaling thing and proving it scientific, but we don't have time for that. So I'm going to keep it moving, but just trust and know that that's very powerful and it's scientific. And so this is the next one. I'm going to skip a few of them for the sake of time and just get to... Uh, my notes um, after that. So I wanted to give a shout out to Alux. So I'm going to go and, and, and get to the last notes that I wanted to say about, about the this cheat sheet, if you will. And that is, and this is not mine. I'm not taking credit for it, but I'm going to add a little bit to it. And this is a statement that says, when you're out of resources, become resourceful. What that means is, instead of asking how, Ask uh, and and uh, I mean, excuse me. Instead of asking what, ask how. So whereas I had the what for leverage, this time I'm going to flip it. You see how we keep going back to that uh, five W's and an H? It helps. Trust me, it does. It helps you stay organized and think differently. And so when something specific, like you need a specific dollar amount by a specific time, instead of asking what you're going to ask. How can I get this done? And a lot of times you're going to find yourself being able to barter, being able to uh, leverage, being able to use unique skills, being able to appeal to people in different ways to network, all of those things that we've talked about. This gives you the leeway 
to move outside of only thinking that the only way you can get something achieved is by to is by you personally procuring the dollar amount instead of using all of your resourcefulness to create the resources. I could tell you about times when I was in school and I had deadlines or I was going to get kicked out and lose my classes and I got very resourceful and uh, was able to make it. But instead, what I'm going to say is this, and this is a, a little statement that I've heard in my family and other families in the South, and it's this, fair trade never meant more never meant robbery. And what that means is be willing to trade for what others will accept as fair. Just because it's something that you're good at or you don't think has value does not mean that it doesn't have value. Like for instance, remember I just said, your ability to keep your mouth shut, to keep a secret, to hold a confidentiality, to look and not tell, to not betray a confidence is a widely sought after and highly lucrative um, resource. And if people are willing to pay and think it's very fair, then you should exploit that to your benefit and theirs. And as my time is really going, I want you to always remember this as I close it out, that value, cost, and price are three different things. People pay for what they value and uh, people begrudgingly uh, give what uh, something costs. The price is negotiable based on what they value or what they think something costs. So make sure that whenever you are trying to do what it is you do, offer value instead of a cost. All right. So y'all, guess what? Yeah, my time is up. I thank you for yours. This has been Michelle Spivey, your Practical Priestess of Wisdom with today's podcast of Wisdom Smack. That's going to do it. I'll see you later. Bye. And that's going to do it for today's podcast of Wisdom Smack with Michelle Spiva. If you like this podcast, please help us get the word out. Like, comment, subscribe, and even share. And if you really like it, please help us continue to get the word out by considering using this show's link for Amazon. So when you want to go to Amazon and you do all of your general shopping, uh, please use michellespiva.com forward slash AMZ. It's simple as that. It doesn't cost you anything extra. And this show might receive a little bit of commission that will go towards helping to further get these episodes out to you and to others. So thank you so much for listening. This has been Michelle Spiva with Wisdom Smack. Bye.